I am totally honored to work with Barely Lace. They are the most deeply felt, musically generous, spiritually aligned, harmonically entrained group that I've ever had the privilege to work with. And so we are live streaming their Music of Samhain concert, which indeed for many years was done at Stone Mountain Farm inside by a fire. And so this is what the universe has created for us today. So please, and our audience is outside on the porch watching. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Greetings, everyone. Happy Samhain, everybody. Happy New Year to those pagans out there. And we are going to sing a number of Celtic ballads about fairies and witches and ghosts because those ballads are full of those themes and that always seemed appropriate to us for Halloween.
probably say we learned that version of Lady Margaret from the mammals because they performed it and we fell in love with the song. So thank you to them. Local group who are great if nobody's heard of them. Uh, they're from our area here in the Northeast. In Ulster County, New York. That's where we are. <laughs> and we love it here, don't we? Yay! <laughs> what are we doing now? Cool sister. Oh. What country is this one from? Probably appears in many of those Northern Isle countries in different versions. This is the cruel sister.
these old ballads great? Yeah. <laughs> They're like so happy and cheerful all the time. Yeah. <laughs> we actually do know one or two that has a happy ending, but that's about it. <laughs> I don't know where I left my list. You got yours on the phone. Yeah, it's Willie's Lady. Oh. Scottish. This is a Scottish ballad. And this one sort of has a happy ending after you get through all the suffering. Yeah. <laughs> and this one is like, you know, if, if you think that you had a bad mother in law, this one is like the bad mother in law from hell. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's kind of a song about a witch, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, I'll turn it up. Okay. Alright. One, two, three. King Willie, he sailed o'er the raging foam. He's wooed a wife and he's brought her home. He's wooed her for her long and golden hair. His mother rocked her a mighty care. And a weary spell she's laid on her. She's been with child for long and many's the year, but a child she can never bear. And in her bower she lies in pain. King Willie at her bedside he does stand, and down his cheeks salt and tears do rain. King Willie back to his mother he did run, and he's gone there as a begging son. Says my true love hath this fine and noble steed, the likes of which you ne'er did see. On every part of this horse's mane, there's hanging fifty silver bells and ten, hanging fifty bells and ten. This goodly gift will be your own, if back to my own true love you'll turn again, that she might bear of the baby boy. Oh, of that child she will never like to be, nor from sickness will she e'er be free. But she will die, and she will turn to clay, and he will wed with another May. Then sighing says this weary lad, as back to his own true love he's turned again, I wish my life it was at an end. And up and spoke his noble queen, as she has told King Willie of a plan that she might bear of the baby boy. She says, you must go, get you down to the marketplace, and you must buy you a loaf of wax. And you must shape it as a babe who is to nurse, and you must make two eyes of glass. Go ask your mother to christening day, and you must stand as close as you can be, that you might hear what she did say. King Willie, he's gone down to the marketplace, and he did buy him a loaf of wax. And he did shape it as a babe who is to nurse, and he did make two eyes of glass. He's asked his mother to christening day, and he did stand as close as he could be, that he might hear what she did say. And how she spoke, and how she swore, she spied a babe where no babe could be before, spied a babe where none could be before. She says, who was it? Who undid the nine witch knots, woven in amongst this lady's locks? And who was it? Who took out the combs of care, braided in amongst this lady's hair? And who was it to the master kid that fed and slept all beneath this lady's bed? Fed and slept all beneath her bed. And who was it on left her left shoe? And who was it who has left her light to be that she might bear of the baby boy? And it was Willie who undid the nine witch knots woven in amongst his lady's locks. And it was Willie who took out the combs of care braided in amongst his lady's hair. And it was Willie the master kid did slay. And it was Willie who has unlaced her left shoe and has let her lighter be. And she has born of the baby son. And great are the blessings that be them upon. Pray for blessings them upon.
Cheers. Yeah. To all Cheers. my ginger tea. It helps me sing. <sighs> oh, take a breath. That one is fun, right? Yeah. Quite the, you know, forward momentum with that one. <laughs> really traditional Halloween ballad that we know. Which we learned from which group? Was it Fairport Convention or Pentangle? Mm -hmm. Fairport Convention. Fairport Convention, one of those art rock groups from the 70s, 60s, 70s in England. Those who don't know them, you might want to know them. I think the song is from Scotland or from the borderlands between Did we figure that out? Hmm? What? Where's that? No. Is it Scottish or anything? No, I think it's on the boundary lands up there. So well, this song is called Tam Lynn.
and, and, and just so you know, everybody, there's all kinds of people tuning in on the chat. So people from all over are watching this, so it's a great opportunity for Barely Laces music to get out connecting into the large dimension of the universe. So thank you all of you who are watching live. We really appreciate it. so hard I choke myself sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I should really take it a little easier on myself. Now this is a song from True Thomas. It's a classic story. And I learned this version from hearing a friend of mine sing it at a campfire. Um, and then recently learned that it's a, comp a contemporary composition. Um, Danny Carnahan. Um, but a contemporary version of a very old ballad about yeah. Thomas the Rhymer. Based, based on a child ballad. <clears throat> Oh, 
moving cloud, she's made the roof, and the flower finds the walls. The jewels did sparkle down at rain at night upon them all. And each day brought Thomas wonder, never seen by mortal eyes. And each night brought Thomas wonder, as next to the lady he did lie. Yet she rose and said, Dear Thomas, it is. story that was told to me by our dear friends Stephen and Robin Marson and I um, wrote my own ballad for it. <laughs> so this is a contemporary writing of an ancient story in a ballad form by Annie and when I took hold of her it like grabbed hold of her right? Yeah, it possessed me for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> she was, she couldn't go, like the lines kept coming through, she had to put down whatever she was doing and Where's go run down. Where's the thesaurus? Where's the thesaurus? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a story from the Arthurian legends. About Sir Gawain. Black Knight, King Arthur, and Lady Ragnell. She's kind of a witchy figure. Right? And it also involves a spell. Oh, it involves a spell. And somebody who changes form. So it has to do with changelings, too. Mm -hmm. Well, not those guys. Huh. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Most of those old ballads are long ones, so it fits right in. Right? Why should we worry? Ready? <clears throat> yes. Charted and forbidden 
chance to burn your car down. Answer me this riddle. Your life to spare. For what above all else do women yearn? Tell me if you
That's a true ballad. <laughs> yeah. And can you imagine? She was possessed writing that for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of yeah. exciting and frightening at the same time. <laughs> Tell the bird eye burning story. Oh, yeah. Well, when we lived on Stone Mountain Farm for those long many a year, which we thoroughly loved, it's a beautiful place. Always feels like when you're going under the bridge, under the rail trail, especially when there's mists in the fields, it feels like you're crossing into the land of fairies. And time moves differently there for our sure, I can tell you that. <laughs> but anyway, we helped take care of the horses there. And at one point, they were like 9, 10, 11 horses. When you let them out into the fields at this time of year, they would come back. Somebody's singing to us outside. A bird is singing to us. Yeah. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> anyway, the horses would come back in with their hair and amazing, crazy hairdos because all the burdock would stick into their hair. Well, one year we went out in the fields and we tried to get all the burdock out of the fields before the horses got into it. We came, we've come back with big balls of burdock stuck together. You know the way burdock hooks onto things. That's how they just. That's like how the guy invented Velcro because it works the same way. We had a fire pit in the front yard, so we made a bonfire and we were burning all these burdock seeds, like big balls of them, and they would glow in these eerie, you know, and. Uh, Apple wrote the burdock burning song. I was working on this. It's a tune. It's a wordless tune. It's um, sung with syllables, not actual words. But I was working on it while this beautiful event was occurring. So, <laughs> so it's been forever after the burdock burning song. And you know, uh, fire has a lot to do with transformation and. Kathleen's channel is Igni Vox, which fire and sound combined, right? Fire and music. Fire and music specifically. Mm -hmm. So these last two songs have to do with death and transformation, and this one particularly about burning something. <laughs>
one more song, correct? We're doing one more song. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Happy All Hallows, everyone. Okay. Yes, sure. So everybody stay tuned. Um, when their Barely Lace is complete, we're going to have a special treat of Liana Gabble, who's going to do an ancestor tap dance. We were going to do this outside with the fire, but given the weather, we're going to do it indoors, and we're going to take just a quick moment to learn the chant and get it set up. But uh, that will be our our chance to really deeply honor our ancestors on this day. So, so stay tuned for that. Well, this is the next song. It's a is um, another song that Annie wrote. It's called the Moth Song. Moth, as in you know, M O T H, moth. Once when we were performing it at the Woodstock Community Center many years ago, we were up on the stage and a friend of ours, All I Son, was dancing down in a circle of light on the floor in front of us. And as she was dancing, she did this kind of whirling dervish kind of spinning thing. She'd have one hand up and she'd visualize that there was like a pole of light she was dancing around. Anyways, this one big white moth came into the count community center while we were singing the song it was flying all around her she's spinning fast and her hand just keeps narrowly missing it hmm. narrowly missing it and then right near the end of the song her hand strikes the moth that goes down on the floor she tramples it under her feet she never even saw it she didn't know it was there <laughs> but this song is about death and transformation and it's about a moth <laughs> and we were on stage just like <laughs> okay then. <laughs> so it was one of those moments. Wish I had it on film. So one animal was harmed. <laughs> <laughs> one animal was harmed in the making of that non-video that didn't get filmed. <laughs> the performance of this song. <laughs> <laughs>
love for all of our beloved dearly departed and uh, thank you to Kathleen Mandeville for having us and helping us get our music out in the world more and to Justin who is here Justin Cathers Justin Peony. Peony, oh, I'm sorry. Justin Peony, who is here with... <laughs> with sound effects. And sound effects, special effects. So thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Happy All Hallows, Sawing. And um, now Kathleen will lead us into the ancestor ritual. With Liana Gable dancing with the representative ancestor here for us today. Yeah, we should, we should move, right? Come on. Come Where on. Do you want us to yes. Why don't you? Why don't you come this way? Hi, everybody. Hello. So um, we were going to do this outside, but now we're doing it inside. So that's beautiful. Liana Gable is going to do an ancestor dance here tapping and so while we're learning the chant and getting set up um, what I would like us to do is to just tune in for a deep moment let's take three breaths feel the earth under our feet and the sky above let us open our hearts and connect through the veil the thin line between this world and the many other worlds that do exist. And let us remember that we are the fulfillment of our ancestral lineage. It is their DNA that flows through our veins and helps us fulfill our destiny. And so on this day of the dead, it's an occasion for us to really honor and remember those who came before us. And so I would like everybody here to just take a moment and tune into an ancestor that they hold dear in their heart. And I'd like to actually hear from people in the gathered audience. Does anybody have something they'd like to offer about their own ancestors at this moment? Um, my mother's father was a quiet man who read a whole lot, and sometimes I feel his presence around me, um, and he liked to garden, and she would sit in the garden, and they wouldn't say much, but she would just like to be near him. Um, I'd also like to, I had one ancestor who was, uh, an Irish woman, and maybe some of my singing comes from her, so I'd like to honor her today. Anybody else? Yeah, I want to honor uh, my ancestors also today. Um, my dad. Um, and the ancestors, my like my grandmother, um, and most importantly, the ancestors that I I never met, but I connected to um, through doing a lot of connection. You know, through family constellation, I realized that um, actually being connected to the ancestors is making me more who I am, and like stepping more into like my own uh, life and bringing my gifts and especially having ancestors from different lands by really connecting to them I feel more connected and you know grounded and rooted and um, yeah I'm honoring them and sending much love and gratitude I, I'd like to honor my mother who only recently felt like an ancestor because she passed away recently, um, but I realize now how much of, how much of what she gave me is still giving me energy and hope every day, 
and her grandmother also gave me so much love. I mean, her, my grandmother, her mother. Um, so it feels sort of like love building upon love, building upon love. And finally, there's a lot of ancestors in my background that I know nothing about because their records were erased. But I feel uh, the strength of their resilience, even though I don't know their names. I would like to honor my grandma, which is my dad's mom, passed away a couple years ago. Um, she was the most kind and a wise person I have ever met. And since her passed away, I always, always try to find a moment to reconnect with her. If there's a moment I want to honor, that, not only spiritually, I really, really want to feel her present. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to feel her. So if this is a poem, if this is a moment, I would like to touch it. So we're, we're going to take that moment, Bing, now, and we'll, we will go outside to a fire and have a chance to honor a quality of our ancestors to the fire. But right now we're going to actually raise the energy and be in a, in a kind of dance together, which Leon is going to lead us in. So um, here's the chant. Um, why don't you come here, Leon? Here's the beautiful ancestor. And everybody, you've got your stones, right? Yep. Okay, you're going to pick up the rhythm.
want to sing another song? Okay. Yeah. How about, should we have an encore? A yeah. brief encore. Thank you, everybody, for holding that energy. Thank you, Liana. Thank you so much. And by the way, this ancestor was made by Gigi Alvare. If Gigi, if you're watching, you remember when you made this, look at, wow, it's reincarnated. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Justin, very much for your technical facilitation. Thank you, everybody, for coming and supporting. We are going to have a fire, but I think, uh, shall we have an encore from Barely Lace? Yes. Yes. Yay! Yes.
and have a fire. It has indeed stopped raining a bit. Oh. So anybody wants to come by for a fire, we're having one. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Day of the Dead, honoring. Thank you, Barely Lace. Oh my God. Thank you. Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay. Okay. More to come. Okay. <laughs>